Okay, today we're going to be showing you how to uh, fix a fill neck on a GM plastic tank. Uh, the fill neck repair kit we got is a metal one to replace the plastic ones that break out. This one here is broke completely out. It's off of a 2003 Trailblazer. And when they break out like this, uh, they're pretty easy to fix. If they're just kind of cracked, then um, it's a little bit harder to fix. Uh, so this one's a pretty easy fix. And the repair piece that we have is uh, a metal one aluminum uh, it's got the check valve in it and everything and it goes right into the hole this will fix any uh, GM plastic tank that has an inch and a quarter uh, fill neck where the rubber meets meets the tank uh, farther upstream it is it is a, a one inch uh, hose and, and steel but right where it meets the tank it's inch and a quarter so First thing you want to do is uh, get the tank cleaned off. I already, I already cleaned this one off. Um, this one, the uh, fuel pump assembly was leaking on, and as soon as the uh, uh, fill neck was touched, it, it broke. So we're going to get the uh, pump assembly out of it, uh, get it cleaned out, and show you how to put the neck in. Two ways to get the pump assembly out, uh, hammer and screwdriver. Or uh, sometimes we'll use an air chisel. So we'll see how it comes apart using the hammer and screwdriver. And later on I'll show you how to uh, fix these quick connects that are stuck on here. This is a typical problem where the quick connect meets the, meets the steel. And I've already cut these, but I'll show you how to uh, put new quick connects in there and not have to buy new uh, fuel lines that run across the top of the tank. So this has a little locking mechanism there. We're going to see if we can get this to come apart using a hammer and screwdriver. You see that's just that's just ripping. So we're going to go to plan B and uh, use the air chisel. And it's relatively dry because I drained all the gas out through the hole. So you want to keep from putting any debris down in there. Doing this job and you're replacing an old rusty fuel pump, you're going to want to make sure you have a new lock ring for it because they're usually not reusable, especially after you take an air hammer to them. There's the old pump assembly. The, the, you can see the tube on that is almost completely broke off. Common problem on, on trailblazers, uh, some of the newer uh, Silverados, Avalanches, Escalades, Tahoes. Uh, they went back, GM went back to these uh, steel pump assemblies and those tubes rot out. So if you're seeing gas, it looks like it's running down from the top of the tank, it's probably your pump assembly. I have a thing made up here to cover that hole up to uh, get it clean around there. Alright, so I got that all cleaned out. Now you're going to want a nice flat surface here. This has a little bit of a ridge to it, so I use a, you want to be careful since there is a little bit of gas in there, you want to be careful of uh, what kind of tools you use around there. Um, we use the roll lock, the green roll locks, um, you can use that to clean that up. Uh, 
nice flat surface there. You can go ahead and take that right on down to the parent material. Okay, we got a nice flat surface there. All right, so we fished our, our wire through there. We got it taped onto the fill neck. We're gonna pull it through. Hold on to it. Now these fill necks either have a, a blue dot here on the where you want the bottom or, or a notch. You want the notch so notch or blue dot between five and seven o'clock so it'll fill okay. We get our other gasket. The O-ring goes in towards the tank. Put that on there. Our nut. All right, now holding the fill neck, tighten it down fairly tight. You want to keep that notch or blue dot again at five o'clock or seven o'clock. Alright, now we're gonna we're gonna test it. You can test it two ways, either you know plug off, tape off the hole, or reinstall your uh, fuel pump into it. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, plug it off with our our plug that we got. And we take some soapy water. We're gonna go around the where the nylon meets the tank and around the threads and see if uh, we get anything to bubble. This is just a little bit of soapy water. You only need a, yeah, three, four pounds of air to test it. The easiest way to test these is through your uh, main vent line. So I disconnected it from the fuel vapor valve here on the tank. I'm going to blow air through that. It's going to go through the canister and into the tank. Um, one thing you, one thing you got, you got to be concerned about when you're doing this. There is a check valve right here on uh, the fuel air valve that sometimes when you're when you're testing it, it will get stuck in the up position. So when I'm all done, I'm going to have that cap off and I'm going to blow gently through it. Make sure that that did not get stuck in the up position when air came back out. A lot of times too, after these are reinstalled, sometimes they don't want to take gas. Um, and it, a lot of times it's either vapor locked or this valve is stuck. Um, so, you know, if that's the case, it don't, doesn't want to take gas and you're going to want to disconnect that again. And uh, 
try putting gas in it again and that'll usually get that valve on stuck then once uh, once you got gas flowing in okay hook that back up Okay, no bubbles. So we don't have any bubbles here. Um, again, a little bit of soapy water, Dawn dish detergent, or kids' bubble stuff works really well. And uh, make sure you got a good good seal there before you you get it all reinstalled. Okay, pause. Here we have a new uh, Delphi pump here. Um, let me go to put this back in. You want to have the O-ring right there because. It's too hard to get through the hole if you have the O-ring already installed there. Um, this is actually a pump for a 113 inch wheelbase and the tank that we're, we got here is uh, the longer wheelbase with the third row seating. This same pump for the 113 inch wheelbase will work in this tank. It may, when it goes up to full, maybe like a half a needle width away from reading full. But this pump is about $100 less. The 113 inch wheelbase pump is about $100 less than using the one for the long wheelbase. So most people usually opt for that. Um, I got this greased up here so it'll install a little bit easier. There is a notch that goes in there so you can only put it in one way. So you get that down in there, get your pump down in there, get your O-ring on there. Get your new lock ring ready. I want to make sure that you're above the plastic lock there. Get it started. Yeah, you can go you can use a hammer and screwdriver to put it back on. Or you can use uh, the uh, air chisel. Okay, and that little plastic lock will go right into the into the lock ring. Now once, you got, once you got your pump in there, you want to test it one more time. Make sure you got a good seal on there. Um, if you're using an aftermarket pump like a AirTex or uh, some of these pumps from AutoZone or that you get for $39 on eBay, their uh, O-rings are usually not the greatest. You may want to consider reusing your old o-ring um, because they do have a high failure rate. Okay, no leaks. Okay, now I'll show you how to fix those uh, quick connects that were stuck to the old pump. Um, I have another set of lines here and so what you want to do is when you cut them off the, when you cut them off the old, old pump this would have been stuck to the old pump you see that you see the the last of the barb there you want to cut that and leave part of that barb in there just like that and then uh, take a little screwdriver get the last of that barb out and what that does is uh, gives you a little bit a little bit of a flange air to uh, get the new quick connect started so you need uh, two new quick connects uh, the main one is 3 8 by 3 8 
and the part the dormant part number for the three eighths by three eighths is eight hundred dash zero eight two. The part number for the five sixteenths by five sixteenths, which is your return line, is eight hundred dash zero eight zero. Again, that's a dormant part number. Most any auto parts store ought to have it. So you take your tube flaring tool and you put it in the corresponding hole. And that's going to be going on there just like that. So you're going to want those duck bills like that. You don't want that up and down. You won't be able to grab a hold of it. So you want that duck bill going horizontal like that. And you clamp, clamp it right on down in the corresponding hole. So since we got the 3 8 main line, we got it in the 3 8 hole. Put a little bit of grease on it. And then you don't really need any special tools, just get that started. Take your hand, push it in. There you go. Just save yourself about 80 bucks having to buy new, new fuel lines. Repeat the same thing on the uh, on the five sixteenths one, and uh, get it all snapped into the brackets. Put a new filter on it. You're good to go. Uh, this uh, fill neck will work on most uh, any GM product, like what we, like what we talked about before: the, the Rendezvous, the Aztecs, uh, minivans, Silverados, S10 pickups. Um, you save yourself a lot of money, or from having to get a new one, or going and getting a used one and having the same problem. Um, we've been using these fill necks here at Gas Tank Renew in Swartz Creek for a couple years now and they work uh, very good. Thank you.